Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about Heroku. So we're going to publish our Node.js app onto Heroku, which is an online uh, cloud platform where we can run our applications. So Node.js, as you saw, we need to be running a server. So when we do something like Node app.js, our server is running and we need to have uh, this type of server constantly running so our app can be available online. And so Heroku provides this for us really easily um, with, with Node.js. So here I have the code that we um, modified in the last tutorial where we used Mongoose to create the scheme in the model. So the only thing I added from that tutorial was this file called package.json. And so I, I created it at the root directory here, so app.js and package.json. And I'll post this below um, as a link for this whole application so you can download it. But basically it just has some information that the Heroku needs to know about your app. So you have name, uh, we can call it testing, version, author, description, engines, and then scripts is what uh, function it's going to use to start, and then dependencies. So this is probably the most important thing here, and this will tell Heroku what dependencies are needed for your application. So, oops. so here you can see I've, I've uh, specified express, and then the latest version with this uh, asterisk, and you can specify a certain version if you want um, here. So you can specify the number like 2.3 or whatever. Uh, that's why I have Express, Body Parser, EJS, MongoDB, and Mongoose. So these are the dependencies that my application needs. So we're not going to change anything in the application. It's going to run just as it did in the last tutorial, but now we're going to make it available online. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Heroku, Heroku.com. And so I'm already logged in. So, but the first step is going to be to create an account. So you're going to go and sign up and you're going to input your email, uh, a password, and then you're going to have to confirm your email. And then once you're confirmed and logged in, you'll end up on this page. So the next thing you're going to want to do is first we'll create a new app. So our, this will be where our application will live in Heroku. So let's give it a name like testing123. It's te taken, testing, testing. Okay, so testing, one, two, three, testing. Just a random name. This is just for the purposes of testing, but in reality, you can give it like a, an actual name. So then create app. And then, okay, so now the first tab we're at is deploy. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your terminal and run Heroku login. So let me clear this actually. Heroku login. And then, so I'm already actually logged in, but what you're going to do here is enter your email. And then, whoops, hold on. Okay, so now you're logged in. And so actually, before you type Heroku login, you're going to have to download and install the Heroku tool belt. So when you click on this, you can just click Heroku tool belt for Mac or Windows, whatever you're on, and it'll just install it into your system. So that's, that's really simple. And once it's installed, you can run Heroku login. So I've logged in and now we're get, you're going to navigate into your application. So here you can see I'm in node app. I list and I have these files. So you're going to run git init. This initializes it for GitHub. And now you're going to run Heroku git remote, just as it says here, and then dash a, and then the name of your application. So in my case, it's testing one, two, three, testing, enter. And then, so now the git remote is set. So now we're able to push our code onto Heroku here. So it's very similar to how GitHub works, except we're going to be, you can see here, we're going to be adding, committing, and pushing to Heroku. Okay, so we specified for Heroku that we need this package JSON file with these dependencies. The next thing you're going to want to do is create a file in Node app. So new file, and we're going to save it and call it proc file. So proc file is basically... We're going to need some way, the, the proc file will be run and it will tell Heroku how to run our application. So we're going to specify it for web and we're going to tell it the command to run, similarly to how you would run it here. So node app.js. Okay. So yeah, similar to how you would run. This is next tick. Whoops. Okay. 
so yeah, so similar, similarly to how you would run um, node app.js or node model, we're going to do the same thing. So node app.js, and that's all. So this is the command that's going to run when our code is on Heroku, and it's run for the first time. So these are the two files I've added in, and hold on. Okay, so now we set that up, and now we can actually see the changes. So we can do git status, and then we can see you. So I've already pushed, uh, or I've already changed the code before, but you'll see all of your files that you've created here, and you'll be able to commit them to Heroku and then push them up. So before we actually deploy our code to Heroku, we're going to have to change a few things with the database. So the first thing we'll do is you're actually going to have to add a credit card. Um, it's going to be free, but they need a credit card on, on, on your account. So billing, you can see I have a card here. Um, they're not going to charge you unless you specify you want to use some sort of um, application where you're charged. So you can see here, you'll go to resources, and you're going to add Mongo, because we need to use Mongo to store the data. And we're going to use MLab Mongo, and because we're going to use this one because it's free. You can see here we have a limited amount of data and a lim limited amount of usage. So for the other ones, you can pay. Uh, don't click these because you know you'll get paid. You'll you'll pay a lot of money. So sandbox free provision. And if you try and do this without adding a credit card, they'll tell you you need to add one. So here we have Mongo Lab DB or MLab Mongo DB. Sorry. So now we can click on it. And we're taken to this dashboard here. So the first thing we're going to want to do, so this is where our, um, we'll actually be able to visualize our collections and da um, documents here. So the first thing we'll do now is go to users and add a user. So we'll create a username, we'll call it, uh, I'll call it Daniel, and then create a password. So abc123, abc123. And this is just for the purposes of testing. And then create. Okay, so we have this user here. And when you click on it, you can see you have DB owner. So here's the URL they give you. Similar to how we're going to copy this URL, go into our code, and you can see it's very similar to this one. Except we're not going to be using this one. We're going to be using the one online. So we're going to change this to mongoose connect. And then, so DB user is the name, your username. So here mine is uh, Daniel. So DB users Daniel and the password I created, ABC123. And then this, don't change any of this. So this will be the database we're connecting and connecting to. So now, so we, uh, in, um, we're using MongoLab as a resource. We've connected to the database. So we're going to have to do one more thing. So when we push this code up to Heroku, it's going to start the application, but we don't specify a port. Uh, Heroku will automatically do that for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do app set and then we're going to set the port to process process environment port or 3000 oops, 3001. So this is saying um, if the port um, number is passed in then use that Otherwise, use 3001. So then we can get rid of, so now we can do, where is it? Process environment port. So we can do process and port. Okay, so now we've set the port here and we don't need this. So server started. So now let's. Mongo error. Okay, hold on. So, okay, so we've created this ABC1234, that's a mistake. Okay, so here we can see when I ran it, server started. So everything seems to be working fine. So we have the port set up and the database set up properly. So here's the database. So now we're going to go back here. So we're going to reload. So we're going to follow the instructions now for actually deploying our application. So we're going to go into deploy. And the instructions are, so we can see the status. So we're going to do git add period to add all the files. Let me get rid of this. Git commit 
dash m and we're going to give it a message. So first commit and then git push Heroku master. It's going to push up all the code. Okay. Pressing, you're going to see a lot of information here. Stalling, building dependencies. Here are the dependencies. Build succeeded and then it's compressing. So now what you can do is click more and click view logs. So you can see it, the logs here. So starting process, change from starting, starting process with command node app.js, so you can see we use that. There's a syntax error, 19, line 19. Oh, whoops, I deleted some code by accident. Oh, here it is. Okay, my mistake. So now let's see the status. Okay, so git add, git commit, it's a mistake. And then git push Heroku master again. Now it's going to be a bit faster. Okay, now let's look at the logs. So you can see here, it's about to update. Okay, starting, deploying, starting process with node app.js, which we specified in the proc file. Starting up. And now, if you click open app, here you go. You have the application up online and running. So you can literally take this link now and send it to someone and they'll be able to use it. So here it is in incognito. So now let's see if it actually works. Oh, whoops. Okay, this is, these are that icon. Okay, not important. So we reload it. Now let's, let's see if it, uh, the routes work. So list users. All right, so let's add someone. Bob, age, 50, occupation, coder, hobby, running. Submit, okay, now we go to list, Bob, perfect. So everything seems to be working, we can go to edit. We can edit this to uh, reading and other stuff. Update, awesome, edit, okay, let's see if deleting works, perfect. So now let's add some, let's add some random information real quick. List. Oh, we probably got an error because, so that's supposed to be user insert. Okay, so that was actually an error because age has to be a number. So let's try and actually add someone. So we specify in the schema that the age has to be a number. So coder, hobby, coding, submit. So we didn't actually account for that error. So here when you create a user and then you want to save it, here we have to account for the error and make sure that these parameters um, subscribe to these values, so string, number, string, etc. So we didn't actually do that on our code, but you should. You should try and catch errors and make sure the, the program doesn't uh, error out or stop running. So, so far it's working, and now we can actually go into this um, MongoDB dashboard, and you can see that if you click on, where's, oh, collections, you can see users was created for us because we're using Mongoose, and you can see the data visually. So you can click edit, and you can see it here. And if, you know, you can edit it here and then save it. So that's what's pretty cool about this, uh, this dashboard. So, so yeah, we basically downloaded Heroku. So the first step was to create an account and then it was to add a credit card. We had to download the Heroku tool belt. And once that, once that was done, we had to initialize our, um, folder by doing git init. And then we set the remote to the folder. So we basically followed these instructions here. And then once that was done, we basically set our code up for um, deployment on Heroku. So we changed the port. Uh, if you don't have this passed in, then it sets it to 3001. And then we had to change this URL for the database. But other than that, everything works just as it should. And yeah, so we basically have our application running on Heroku now. So if you visit this link, it probably won't work because it'll be down or I'm going to take it down but your own link will work. So when you set it up and you name your application something, so you don't have to name it this, you can name it, you know, my application test or whatever, um, you'll be able to send that link to someone. So your code will be live and anyone can see it. So yeah, we deployed to Heroku and we got it up and running.